Hey guys, I'm Bez and welcome to your 8th Java Swing tutorial. Now in this video you would be learning about checkboxes. Now I'm sure that you have used checkboxes before. These are the you know small rectangular boxes which when you click a tick appears on them and you'll get to know it soon. So let's just start. First let me just add a simple J label. We are just gonna be building a pretty simple application. Now here I'll just write something like please choose the dishes you like. That's good. I'll just resize it properly. Okay. And now I'll just add some checkboxes. So from here just being some checkboxes. The first one would be what like pie now that's something I really like next uh, what should I write burger okay next rotten fish well that's something that nobody likes right I just have to put something like that so rotten fish is a very good choice now after this I'll put your favorite food which is banana I hope you like banana isn't it always eat a banana every single day so this is these are the check boxes now I'll just need a simple button So what does this application going to do? Well, it will just, you know, through this level it's telling you to choose all the dishes you like and after you do it, after you choose, you click the submit button and after you click submit, it will just display a simple message and tell you that, hey, these are the dishes you like. So it's, you know, pretty dull application. I know that, but for learning purpose, it's a pretty good one. Trust me. So now it has no functionality, right? So if I just run it, so here I can just choose as many checkboxes I want. I'm never gonna choose this rotten fish, trust me. And if I click submit, nothing really happens because I haven't created any listeners to listen to these events. Now for buttons, we had used action listeners, right? But for checkboxes, we are just going to use item listeners. Now why we are gonna do that? I will discuss later on but let me just first add some item listeners so how would you do it just right click on any checkbox go to add event handler and then from this list hover over item and click on item state change well the item state change is the method that you have to override when you create this anonymous class that implements the item listener interface so within this I have to write the code that would be executed if this checkbox is either selected or deselected or whatever happens to it right so let's just do it so this is what the pie checkbox right but before we do it I just need one thing that is like four boolean variables why you will know shortly let me just add some variables like boolean pie equals false the initial value of these variables would be false next is bar for burger then ban for banana and rot for rotten tomatoes rotten fish i guess okay that's it initially all of them are false so here i'm just going to check a condition that whether the checkbox stating pi is selected or not and this is how i'm going to do it i will write if E dot get state change is equal to item event dot selected then what I'm gonna do so this simply tells that if the state that has changed 
is the selected stage that means i have clicked i've selected that text box then do this so what am i going to do here i'll just set pi equals true and if it's false if i haven't selected it rather i've deselected it then i will again set pi equals false and this is the same thing that i'll be doing for you know all the check boxes but before that i need to add the boxes for like for burger i need to again add it item state change and here i just need to change pi to bur same thing this is really boring trust me what is this rotten right so r o t and by the way i'll be using the j option pane dot so message dialog to display the message at the end and i guess you already know about it because i had discussed it before in a previous video i guess okay so that's it so now i've created my events right so whenever these boxes are clicked then those variables will change their values to whatever depending on the condition that we have set so now what happens when you click the submit button so we just need a simple action listener for this button so we'll just double click it and now let me write the simple action listener now in this action perform method i need to just create a simple string like string message equals you like space why i do that you will just know and right now i just have to check for the conditions that whether the different boolean variables are true or false if they are true then they will just you know if ban is true then banana will get appended to this string message and you will just see it right now so if let me just start with banana because i really like it if banana is true then message equals i should say plus equals banana i'll just give it a space again again i have to check for like pi if this is also true i'll again write here message plus equals pi similarly for the last two well nobody is going to like rotten fish right but still for coding purpose i have to write it Again, a space. Well, I just missed the space in the last one. Never miss a space in your life. So, if for the last one is burger, right? It would be message plus equals burger. Okay, so I've created my message that would be displayed through the message dialog. so i'll just simply create my dialog right now and how we do that you already know it show message dialog the first component is again null and i don't think ever i'm just going to be changing that or pass message here and that's it so this is the action time let's run our application so this is our application right it looks great So now let me just select like pie and burger and click submit. See, it's showing. You like pie and burger. And then if I click banana, then it's showing you like banana, pie and burger, right? 
and if I click rotten fish as well click submit it will display all of them you like banana pie rotten fish and burger so this was a pretty simple example to demonstrate the concept of checkboxes and how they work and now why I didn't use action listener for checkboxes but I use item listeners well you know item listener listens to the change of state of an item but action listener doesn't listen to the state change right action listener just looks for an action so for an action listener the selecting and deselecting both are the same thing but for an item listener these two are separate things and that's why you know we set this condition like here item event dot selected so an item listener can distinguish between selected and not selected but an action listener can't do it it will take everything as a simple action and will process it in that same way so that's why that's the reason why i chose item listener for checkboxes so that's it guys i hope you understood if you don't then just put a comment in the comment section i will just try to answer as many of those as i can and i will just talk to you guys in the next one Thank you very much for watching.